Hello, and welcome or welcome back to the AGF Design Studio channel. My name is Alana. I'm a freelance lettering artist and designer, and today's video is going to be all about using gradients in Adobe Illustrator for the iPad. We're going to be talking about the different types of gradients that you can create with a few helpful tips and tricks along the way. So without further ado, let's jump in. So the first type of gradient that we're going to be looking at are linear gradients. So to get started, let's go over to our shapes menu. If you press and hold, you'll see that you have a few different options. So let's start with a simple square. If you ever want to constrain your proportions and don't want a rectangle, you can use your touch shortcut to tighten up those proportions. So all of the gradient magic really happens with our color chip. So if we're going over to the left here and we tap that top circle, which will be our fill, we're going to just toggle over to the gradient section. By default, you'll have white on one end and black on the other end. So as it sounds, this is a linear gradient. So our gradient will be following this line. So you can tap any of these dots and assign them a new color, a simple tap, and assign a new color. You'll also see a very small mark in between that you can slide back and forth to adjust the blend of those colors. Now, you're not limited to just two color spots along your line. To add new colors, you can just tap anywhere on your line and you'll see that you'll have sliders pop up in between every single dot. So then you can start adding additional colors wherever you'd like. Now let's say you've gotten a bit carried away. You can always delete any of these colors by hitting that little trash can icon. Additionally, any of these points can easily be removed by simply dragging them away, up or down from the line. You'll also notice that you have the option to adjust the opacity of any of these colors as well. So you can just drag to the left to decrease the opacity or to the right to increase it. Let's say now that you don't want your line to be traveling in this way. Let's say you want some flexibility with how it travels across your shape. You can do that by selecting any point at either end and moving and dragging them around your shape as you see fit. You'll also notice that the program lets you extend your gradients far past the bounds of your shape. So just something helpful to keep in mind. All right, let's check out our next type of gradient. So to better represent the next gradient that we're going to be seeing, I have chosen a circle because we're going to be looking at radial gradients. Let me show you what I mean. We're going to hit the second option. So you'll see by default, you've got a center color here and you've got an outermost color over here. And again, just like with your linear gradients, you can tap these points and assign them new colors. This all follows the form of a circle, like I said. So much like before, again, you can add more color stops in between at any point on the line. When it comes to adjusting, you have a few options. I can grab this outermost point and pull. You can pull and rotate like so. You'll also see this white dot at the top here. And I also can use that to change the overall proportions and elongate the gradient. So radial gradients are pretty unique in the fact that as you add more colors, it sort of adjusts the rings. So you'll get that kind of ring effect. But just because I've chosen a circle for this doesn't mean that I can't have a different shape for my radial gradients. Radial gradients can be applied to squares, stars, any kind of shape that you like. Do note that our gradients are being applied to the fill of our shapes. Gradients cannot be applied to the strokes of your shapes unless the stroke is expanded. So for example, Let's add a black stroke to this to start. 
and I can go down here to adjust the size of my stroke. And then from here in the object panel, I can select create stroke outline. And by double tapping my stroke, it'll now be recognized by the program as a fillable shape. So that was just a little extra tip of how you can, if you want to apply gradients to your strokes, but we're not done yet. Let's take a look at our next type of gradient. All right, not gonna lie, this type of gradient is my personal favorite. Let's take a look at point gradients. I'm gonna select my object, click my color chip, go to that gradient section, and we're going to hit this last icon. So this is my favorite because point gradients allow you to place points anywhere and assign colors to them. So you just select any of these points and assign them a color. This is by far the most flexible and versatile kind of gradients, completely free form. And you might notice that as you place your points, you have a small ring around the outside of your point. If you are to pull that white dot, you can increase the spread of the color around that point. So that's just for so like an advanced editing if you want to have that option for yourself. So if you want this to sort of be a little bit more white in that area, you can do that and so on and so forth. These can simply be dragged around to change their positioning if you like. Again, to delete any of these points, you can just hit that trash can icon there. You can also adjust your opacity like we saw before. You can also adjust your opacity from the color menu to the left. So you can also apply this to any kind of shapes that you create. That but we're not done yet. Let's take a deeper look at shapes and gradients. So when you're working with gradients, you're not always going to be just using a single object at a time. Let's take a look at how these gradients behave when we're using overlapping and combined objects. To this circle, I'm gonna add this square. Now we can see both of these have a linear gradient applied to them. And we know that because we can check and see in our gradient panel. So I'm just gonna select both of these objects. I'm gonna go to my Combine Shapes panel, and I'm gonna select Combine All. You can see a preview of how these two shapes will look as they're combined. And from here, I'm going to hit Convert to Path. As you can see, we now have one gradient that's linear and traveling from left to right. Again, we can adjust this, rotate it, and add more colors if we'd like, just like before. But you might also notice that one of our gradient options is no longer available. That would be our point gradient over here. So we can still do radial and we can still do linear, but we can no longer do point gradients. Let's take a look at why that is. This is because of the way that I combine the shapes. So let's go back. So I'm gonna duplicate these two. And this time I'm gonna do something different. For these two, I'm going to go back to my Combined Shapes panel, but this time I'm going to use my Shape Builder. With the Shape Builder, you can just pass over any of your objects to combine them. If I go back to my Gradient menu, you can see that Point Gradient is now an option. This is because Point Gradients cannot be applied to what are considered compound paths. So because we hit that Convert to Path, we don't have the option of Point Gradient. So that's just something to keep in mind as you're applying gradients to objects. If you're seeing these behaviors or certain kinds of gradients not being able to work for certain objects, that's typically the reason why. Let's also say that I wanna introduce another shape, but I actually just want to copy and apply the same kind of gradient from this object to this one. I can tap 
the object whose gradient I want to copy. I can open this edit menu and tap copy appearance. Then I'll select the object that I want to have adopt this gradient, go back and hit paste appearance. From here, we can check the kinds of things that we want to carry over and hit paste. So we're gonna go in here and we're just gonna adjust that point gradient there. You can see that I have the same color options and that same point gradient being applied to this new object. And this can be used for any kind of different coloring that you wanna do. You can do that to apply different kinds of color settings, stroke settings to different objects really easily. And as we're looking at gradients and these freeform applications of color like point gradients, you might be drawing parallels in your mind to mesh gradients from the desktop version of the app. So let's take a look at that really quickly. So here on the right, I have a star that I created using a mesh gradient in Adobe Illustrator on the desktop. But you'll notice if you double tap into this, you'll see that it says object not supported on this device yet. So there is no mesh gradient per se in the iPad version of Adobe Illustrator. And there is no way for me to edit any of the color points that would be recognized in the desktop version of the app at this time. So just so that you know, when you're dealing with that, especially if you're switching back and forth between your iPad and your desktop a lot, you'll get certain sorts of um, non-supported objects and certain things that pop up for you. So just keep that in mind. Also, while you're using freeform or point gradients, you'll also notice that while you can do certain repeat functions like radial repeat or a grid repeat, you are not able to apply a blend. This is not supported for objects that are using point or freeform gradients. So, so far we've been looking at using shapes from the program or shapes that we create and filling them with gradients. But you can also use the brushes in the program and use gradients as well. So if I go over to my brush section and I'll select blob brush, and I'll just use one of these basic ones. With it, you can create a completely filled shape filled with gradient. You can edit your color stops like we've seen before. And this is just a really nice, flexible and versatile way to use gradients in the program. You can use nice fluid motions, which is awesome for people like me who are lettering artists, or just for anything that you might want to use this for. It's very versatile, and it helps you expand your creativity a little bit. I really encourage you to just have fun with this and explore using these settings for yourself. You'll also note that when you're using the blob brush, every time you make a fluid motion and you stop, that will create a new separate filled shape. So anything that isn't drawn together is considered as a separate object. I hope this video taught you something new. Share something new that you learned in a comment down below, or if you have a question, let me know. Check out my playlist with more Adobe Illustrator videos and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.